Top three places you can't go and people who went anyways. Yo, if Area 51 in on here, I'm gonna be mad. I think we all tend to believe that everywhere in the world is accessible if I just had the time, the money, or maybe both. Just but run today, there. Today, I'm gonna shatter that illusion and share with you a top three list of places you can't go, no matter how much time nah. or money you may have. I could go anyway. And for each of these locations, Helicopter. I'll share with you an instance of people going there anyways and what happened to them. Spoiler, it didn't end well. But before we get into today's top three list, if you're a fan- Chat, what would actually happen if I got a helicopter and drove into Area 51, parachuted and landed in there? Do you reckon it would just blow me out of the sky? Kind of this tiny, lush, heavily forested, beautiful island, 93 I got miles it. off the coast of Brazil, that no matter how beautiful it looks, no one will go to this island. In fact, you're not allowed to go to it because the Brazilian Navy has forbid it. So the legend of this island really began in the early 1900s oh, it's when not Spanish. a local fisherman was off the coast of the island and saw right on the edge of the forest were these beautiful banana trees with all these bananas that were ripe and ready to Ooh. be picked. And he thought, I can easily pull my boat over to those rocks Free over bananas. there, hop out, grab some bananas and bring them home, no problem. That'll take me, you know, 10 minutes to do. And so he pulls over by himself to get these bananas. He anchors his boat. He walks up the beach. He climbs up the tree and he starts hacking down. Some oh my bananas. God, he's going to get eaten. While he's up there, he suddenly feels a sharp pain on his rib cage. Okay, we've been through this before, bro. We've been through this before. 100% a person, a cannibal is nothing on his rib, bro. That, ah, you know what I'm saying? Load him in with the bananas, nothing on his rib. And he falls out of the tree. And he looks down and he's bleeding out of his rib cage because oh. he can see it on his shirt. That's... Bro, I'm correct! That is a human bite. That is a human bite. Blood on his shirt. Was there a branch that jabbed me in the side? Like, what was that? And he's alone. He's 93 miles from the mainland. Oh, so he's panic. dead. He ditches the bananas. He runs to his boat, gets it unanchored. Not see you, and starts there? making his way back to the mainland. But on the trek back... He passes out in the boat. Later that day, another group of fishermen see this boat kind of drifting around near some rocks and it looks like something's wrong. So they make their way over to it. And there's this fisherman who went to get the bananas, but he's lying on his back. Does he not know he's who clearly them dead up? and he's in a pool of his own blood. Wait, wait. Get the bananas, but he's lying on his back. He's clearly dead and he's- Wait, he died? He's dead? Oh, he actually died? He's in a pool of his own blood. 20 years after this incident, there was a lighthouse keeper that was assigned to work on this island and he brought his family with him. They were staying in the main house of the lighthouse and it was going fine for the first couple of days they were there. Wait, so you're telling me he died for a bunch of bananas? Oh, wow. What bit him then? Do we not know? It, it looked like a human bite. It didn't look like a snake bite. It looked like someone munched him. But at some point, captains of vessels that would drive past this island and relied on that lighthouse noticed that the light wasn't on. And so they reported it to the mainland and a search party was sent out to check on the lighthouse keeper and his family to make sure that they had all their supplies and that they were okay. When they get to the lighthouse, they find the entire family is dead in their bed. And oh the my only God. they had were these puncture marks all over the bodies of these deceased lighthouse keepers and an open window. What is that by? That looks like a baby human bite. Oh my God, even the babies are eating people. Yo, even the babies are eating people. Oh, this is crazy, bro. This is crazy. Oh yeah, actually this is like a smiley face with the tongue coming out. So what killed these people that went to this island? Technically they died from a poison that literally melts your organs within 60 minutes of coming in contact with it. But that poison comes from a very famous venomous snake called the Golden Lancehead Viper oh. that only exists on this island. They uh. exist nowhere else in the world. And so this island has been dubbed Snake Island. And since nobody goes to this island, the Lancehead Viper population has exploded. Oh my God, it's They loads. are thriving on this island. Not in fact, pie. researchers say that there's at least 3,000 of these venomous snakes that live on this island. And for every one square meter of the island, there is a snake, which means if you're on this island, you're dead. You are always within one meter of something that can kill you. 
Oh my god, Medusa would love this place, bro. That literally looks like Medusa's head. She would love this place. This is her heaven. This is, I guarantee you, bro, if you go to the middle of this island, Medusa's there chilling, mate. And these snakes aren't just on the ground either because their primary food source are birds. And so the snakes have begun to live in the trees and catch birds that land in the trees. Meaning if you happen to be walking on this densely forested island, they're gonna jump on you'd you. be surrounded almost 360 degrees by these wickedly venomous oh, this snakes. Oh, horrible. That if you are bit, you have 60 minutes to get the antidote. If you don't, you're doomed 100% of the time. Nowadays, the only people that go to this island are the Navy, who replace the batteries in the lighthouse, which is now automated because it's too dangerous to be there. They go once a year to replace those batteries. Yo, imagine, I wanna see the salary for, salary for the team that has to go there and replace the batteries. Imagine being the ones having to go there, bro, with 3,000 snakes that can literally kill you in like, you, you're dead in 60 minutes, bro. Yo! That is the worst job ever, bro. That would be the worst job ever. Yo, screw the lighthouse. Bro, just make a lighthouse somewhere else. Screw the lighthouse, bro. Researchers occasionally go there and you have poachers that go to try to catch some of these snakes because oh, I bet they're they so end up rare, dead. they can sell on the black market for 10 to 30,000 US dollars. Who's coming? Who's coming? No, I don't care. How much? How much? Who's coming? I got my lightsaber, bro. I got my lightsaber, bro. Hey, we need a shield. We need a shield. We need a shield. I got my shield. I got my lightsaber. I got my shield. I'm fucking ready. I'm fucking ready. Who's coming? 10 grand? Wait, wait. Someone do the maths. There's 3,000 of them. 10 grand each. Three thousand of them, ten grand each. Wait, chat. How much is that? Is that thirty million? Is that thirty million? Wait, what's that number? That that number's massive. Is that thirty million? I, I, chat. We're, we're organizing it. Group project. Group project. Group project. We're doing it. We're doing it. We're hey, listen. We'll take 30 of us, right? We'll split it a million each. Actually, no, 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 no. Screw that. We'll take 10 of us. I want three mil. I want three mil. Actually, I'm team leader. I get I get five mil. You lot get a mil each. We'll take we'll take we'll take uh, 25. We'll take 25 of us. We'll take 20, 25 of us. Group project. Let's do it, man. But many of these poachers that manage to sneak onto the island just get bit by these vipers and die. So there you go, karma. Don't let that disappoint you. Don't let, hey, hey, what he just said, don't let it put you down. We will strive. Listen, I'll get protective gear. We're all get, we'll get like riot gear and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? They die, we won't die. We won't die. In early 1945, during World War II, the British decided they wanted to take back Ram Ree Island from- I said, why have you just say use protection, bro? We're going there to sell the snakes. We're not fucking the snakes, buddy. I don't know what weird thing you're into, bro, but we ain't doing that, mate. We ain't doing that, mate. We ain't doing that, bro. Ram Ree Island, Ram Ree Why are they all islands? In early 1945, during World War II, oh, the British decided it's they true. wanted to take back Ram Ree Island from the Japanese. It's Ram Ree decided. Island is well, a fairly nice. large, totally flat island off the coast of Burma that was a great staging location to fly air campaigns onto the mainland. So it was a great air base. And the British had actually owned this island, but the Japanese had taken it back from them in 1942. And so here they are in 1945, looking to take it back. So on January 21st, 1945, British and Indian infantry stormed the beaches of Ramri to try to take it back. As soon as they land, they have all this naval artillery support just 
bombing the crap out of this airbase. Well, it's just a matter good. of time before they overwhelmed the remaining Japanese. But the Japanese do not want to surrender, and instead they give up the airbase that they were on, so the British take that back, and the remaining thousand Japanese soldiers started retreating to the opposite end of the island, to where there was a much larger battalion of Japanese soldiers that they could meet up with. But the only issue with this particular retreat was they would have to go through 10 miles of mangrove swamp where there's poisonous spiders and insects and yep, deep mud nah. making it almost impossible to move but they're determined and they head off into the swamp but what the japanese were not ready for is what ramry island is famous for alligators a creature that makes poisonous snakes and spiders and insects look like child's play and alligators they were walking directly into its den the british troops decided we're not going to go chasing them into the swamp and instead what they did is they set up boats blocking positions outside of the swamp. If any of the Japanese tried to escape, they would be there waiting. And so the only way- Wait, to... so it's either die to the alligators, bro, or die to the British- Okay, yeah, nice, 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 nice. Japanese could get out of there would be to go to the absolute other end, 10 miles away where their Japanese counterparts were. So that night as the British are just kind of hanging out in their boats, staring at the swamp, they start hearing screams coming from inside of the swamp. And it's Japanese soldiers. Then you hear gunfire and then silence. Could it not just kill the start all over again? All over this huge swamp was just screams, gunfire, silence. Screams, Could gunfire, not just silence. Them? And the British are watching this like, do we have troops in there? What's going on in there? What was going on in there is defined by the Guinness Book of World Records as the largest massacre of humans caused by animals. Huh? Not just any animal, saltwater crocodiles. These massive man eaters. Wait, could they not just shoot the crocodiles though? Could they not just shoot them? There's a thousand of them with guns. Not just any animal, saltwater crocodiles. These massive man-eating crocodiles can weigh up to 1,000 kilograms or 2,200 pounds. It has they can armor. grow to be seven meters in length or about 23 feet in length. And National Geographic has labeled Close these enough. crocodiles like as the most likely to eat a human of all animals. Nice. And Ramree Island has the largest population nice. of saltwater crocodiles in the world. And they all lived inside of the swamp that the Japanese had gone into. A lot of them were bleeding from the battle they were in and so they were literally alerting hundreds of saltwater crocodiles that looks horrible that looks vicious right but listen a thousand japanese soldiers all with guns how are you not killing crocodiles they're not bulletproof bro they're not bulletproof did the crocodile whack out a mini uzi as well like bro what crocodiles are these they're not bulletproof! Nah. How are a thousand soldiers with guns dying to crocodiles? Like, yeah, fair enough, some will die. Surprise attacks. But I'm guessing they got grenades and all sorts. No, Isaac, this is a different island. The Snake Island, they ain't got these crocs, bro. We're chilling. Cro these crocodiles are wearing bulletproof vests? What? What the f... Also, their location. Saltwater crocodiles are notorious night hunters. So what probably happened is the Japanese got inside... Oh, it was at Mando. night. The crocodiles were immediately aware of their presence. That makes more sense. they waited until nighttime before they started having a feeding frenzy. Oh, and over the course of the night, small. a number of Japanese soldiers had jumped out the sides of the swamp, exposing themselves to the British. And so about 20 of them were captured, and they said that they were completely surrounded by these crocodiles, that everywhere you looked, there were growling, huge crocodiles eating one person, and as soon as they were done, they would just charge after you and eat Jesus. you. And at the end of their retreat, when the Japanese did get to the other side of the swamp, only 500 of the 1,000 made it out the other side wow and so to this day people died? stay far away from ramry island because there are so many of these man-eating saltwater crocodiles that have no issue ripping you to shreds bro that's crazy i want to i want to know how many crocodiles they took out or if they're literally bulletproof bro that's mental chia da kokuya chia da kok da kok 
Gia da Quakia. Okay. On November 14th, 2018, John Chow hired two fishermen to take him out to this little island in the Indian Ocean. The fishermen were not excited about this, not only because it was illegal to take him out to the island, but because the last time some fishermen had gone to this island, they had both died. But the fishermen needed the money, and so they went with John, and they drove under the cover of darkness Just to this island, there. and they anchored a little ways offshore. The next morning, when the sun came up, John asked the fishermen to take him in a little bit closer, but the fishermen refused. So John puts a kayak in the water, and he begins paddling into this island. Oh, I know what this island is. I know what this island is. Here we go. It's not crocodiles. It's not snakes. Some hours did. And as he gets close Some to the actual did. beach, he sees someone come out of the forest who has their face painted yellow. Cannibals. And screeching at the top of their lungs. And John yells out that he's not threatening them. He just wants to come ashore and talk to them. John's and an idiot. a wave of people with yellow painted faces come charging out of the wood line and start firing arrows in his direction. So John, in a pain. Bro, this guy right here is screaming, Hey, John! Hey, John, we're friends, bro! Hey! Hey, John, come here, man. Come here, man. Bro, they're ready for food. They're hungry, bro. They're hungry. Bro, this guy, he's hungry. This guy is hungry, bro. Coming out of the wood line, eat John. start firing arrows in his direction. So John, in a panic, turns around and paddles right back out to the fishing boat. Yeah, Later yeah, that day, fall. John tries to make another attempt at landing on this island and communicating with the people that live there. Yo, so he don't takes fall, his kayak John. and he goes down a little bit farther away from where those people had emerged from the tree line earlier in the day and shot him with arrows. He figured he was a little bit farther out of arrow range this way. He lands his kayak, he gets out, and the same group of people come out farther down the beach where they had been before. They see John, they all start looking at each other and they start uh -oh. screeching and running down the beach towards John. John stands there until they come all the way up to him. They don't shoot him with arrows, but they take his kayak and they don't really know what to make of him. They're staring at him. And they start speaking to each other in a language John doesn't understand. Oh, he looks and at tasty. some point, a child pulls his bow and arrow out and fires a bow directly at John. What the and fuck? And he's holding a Bible and he stopped the arrow with his Bible. And at that point, John is like, okay, I gotta go. And he jumps in the water and without a kayak has to swim a mile to get back to the fishing boat. The whole time, these people are firing arrows arbitrarily in his direction as he's swimming back out to the boat. And Yo, why was it the kid cannibal that didn't want John there? Why, why was it the kid out of all people that fired the arrow? And so the next day on November 16th, he told the fishermen he wanted them to drop him off and he would swim in and he wanted them to leave and be completely out of sight. The fishermen did not want what? to do this, but John reassured them that he was going to be just fine. He knew what he was doing. And so the fishermen drop him off and they leave. The next day when the fishermen come back to collect John, they see these people with painted yellow faces out on the beach dragging his body by a rope. No one knows exactly oh what happened. Oh my God, listen, listen, listen. Honestly, John must have wanted to die. Like, 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 bro, 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 bro. They're all firing arrows at you, yeah? yeah? The only way you'll go back is if you want to die. Do you know what, like, bro, what? Like, you must want to die. Next day, when the fishermen come back to collect John, they see these people with painted yellow faces out on the beach dragging his body by a rope. No one knows exactly what happened to John, how Dad, they killed him. There's lots of speculation him. about how it went down, but it's too dangerous for anyone to go back and retrieve his body. And so his body remains at North Sentinel Island. The few hundred people that live on In North Sentinel Thomas. Island that were responsible for killing John Chow, they're referred to as the Sentinelese and they are unbelievably primitive. They are completely cut off from the modern world. They live a hunter-gatherer lifestyle. Mad. They have no conception of agriculture. They haven't even discovered fire yet. They literally have to wait for lightning to strike and then run and collect the embers. And nah, chat, we're all thinking the same thing, bro. We're all thinking the same thing. Imagine going there to their island where they haven't even discovered fire and you bring some lighters and you're like, ooh, ooh, look at me, look at me. <laughs> Make me king. You know what I'm saying? You can take over the island, bro. Like, if you don't die to them and you start showing fire, you know what I'm saying? Like, fire, 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 technology, you know what I mean? They'll, like, they, they'll start worshipping you, bro. They'll start worshipping you. Do some magic tricks. But you gotta survive. They're most likely gonna kill you. So, like, I don't know how you're gonna survive, but... 
they made some cool stuff on the ad. Like what? You bring an AK-47. That probably won't go down too well. We'll be picking. We'll be picking homes up after uh, off the island, bro. And they're all dead. You just killed the whole entire island. They will kill you for being an evil sorcerer. True. They won't know what a gun is. They'll just charge you still. Yeah, yo, bro, it'll be like COD zombies. They literally have to wait for lightning to strike and then run what? and collect the embers and try to keep the embers alive. Researchers believe that the Sentinelese are direct descendants from the earliest human ancestors. Give him some couple lighters, bro. And as much as we'd like to learn more about the Sentinelese, we probably won't because they aggressively resist outside contact. They won't even let the other similarly primitive neighboring island tribes to come on their island. The Sentinelese want only Sentinelese on that island. No one else can be there. No, we need a massive ship with all the, like get, get a load of women with massive asses, bro. And have them on the ship twerking. And then you just sail the ship by. They'll, they'll know what they're missing out. They'll know what they're missing out. Hey, they'll make contact then, bro. They'll make contact then, bro. They'll make contact then, bro. You, you, you see all the Centralese going. And then you could conquer them. If you're not a Centralese and you try to go to their island, they'll just kill you. So let me know what you think of these three crazy locations. And let me know if you could go to any of these yo it would be really cool to like inve if, if you don't kill them by the flu or whatever yeah it would be really cool to see like what they've done on the island it would like a documentary on it it would be really cool